You can smile if you want to. Good boy. You all got to smile nice because these will be on your cards right up until year 12, 13. New faces are arriving at the end of the summer term and it's a frightening time for all of them. They are at the mercy of a whole army of associate staff and people like Karen Douglas are there to keep everything running smoothly. Do you want to have your photo done at the end? Yeah, you get on the end and we'll find you at the end. I'll just sit back in the chair, lift your foot up and we'll And school nurse Gail Adams is on hand to make sure every new child is comfortable in their new surroundings. The stress levels are huge for them. They've come from these tiny little schools and all of a sudden they're in this huge area, they don't know where they are. I was really, really scared. There are so many more people and it's much more bigger and, well, you might get lost. Very nervous. I was really, really scared because um, I'd heard a lot of stories about home ed. They're worried that they're going to get lost. They're worried that they're going to miss the bus. They're worried that they're just going to get lost in the system. This is Homewood School in Kent. It's one of the largest schools in the country, with a population of over 2,100 pupils, and the 120 dedicated associate staff are tasked with ensuring the welfare of children in numerous ways. Whether it's the caretaker policing the roads in the morning, the kitchen staff keeping order in the lunch queue, the admissions officer running around all day, or the school farmer a world away from the day-to-day -day life of lessons. They are all crucial in making children's time at school as happy as possible. The government are calling the skills they need the Common Core, and at Homewood, they reckon all these skills are alive and well. We'll be looking at two aspects of the Common Core in this programme. It's the end of the summer term, and admissions officer Karen Douglas and her colleagues have their work cut out, making sure that the Year 6 induction week is running smoothly. We have about 43 feed schools, um, feeding the year sixes into the sevens this year. Um, we want them to come in, have a good week, go away with no worries so they can enjoy their summer holidays. We want them to meet the children they're going to be with in August, um, meet their form tutors, get a, a sort of a feel for the school. It's important, it is important, it's part of their growing up. It makes you feel a lot very responsible <laughs> and it makes me really feel adult like going to a new school and where there's loads of things to find out and stuff like that yeah but for some children it can be a very traumatic time hello mr denning oh okay they find the change difficult and their nerves can get the better of them okay okay we had one young girl yesterday and she is literally coming, she's a single, single girl coming from a school and she doesn't know anybody, she hasn't even got any family or friends local. They're not imagining they feel sick or that they, they're not imagining that you have to sort of say, right you can sit here for a minute, but I've actually taken students back to class crying because whatever we've tried, they're not going to stop. We found some other children to sit with. Luckily, it just all worked out right, and they were in her teaching group. So she's gone off with them now, and that's that's our role. That's what we're here to, to help and do, to settle down and that. But it's not just the students who need reassuring. Sometimes the mums and dads need some attention as well. It's almost like let, letting go. It's that part of cutting the apron strings for some mums. And at Homewood, the Assembly for Year 6 Parents is a crucial part of the induction process. Your sons and daughters are starting school in September 2009. That means that they will reach Year 11, five years' time. Transition is about moving a young person from one institution to another. Bear in mind, we draw students from somewhere around about 50-odd primary schools. And it's really important that we recognise when a young person moves from an institution that they've known and loved for seven years, that we make that movement as smooth as possible for everybody concerned. I think it's fantastic. I think, I mean, all the other schools in the area just do a day. I think a week is brilliant. I think because our children adapt so quickly, don't they? You know, they're thrown in and within a week they're, they're fine, yeah. aren't they? So, yeah, you'll be fine when you... <laughs> <laughs> of course you will. <laughs> Once students and parents are reassured, 
Homewood's associate staff also find it useful to keep primaries informed about how the week is going. And Karen is off to meet Homewood's admissions officer, Caroline Hussey, as she catches up with teacher Hugh at a local primary school. I think generally you're not going to have too many problems this year. I think, you know, we've got a, got a, few, that are, a few that are autistic and a few dyslexics, um, but, and I, but actually the parents, the parents are very good this year. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Transition for me means taking quite a practical approach to, to the move itself, being able to actually say, well, you know, this is how the school works, this is how you'll move around, this is where everything is, this is the person that you'll actually um, liaise with. We've, very, we've got a mum who's, uh, again, a little bit worried about him coming to a school of the size of Homewood. It would be good if you could do some work with him okay. in order to uh, get him a bit more settled and mum a little bit more settled yeah. about him going. Do you want to do that the same way? Do you want to actually get mum in? It's very strange when you see them go off to their new school. We've, we've taken them in in year three and you watch them sort of grow and mature um, before they go at the end of year six. And uh, they really do mature and they're ready for their secondary schooling. And it's, I think we, we view it as a sense of pride when we send them out to their secondary school that we've seen them grow up and we've imparted that knowledge and, and now they're moving on to the next stage. Now I've been here for a few days in induction week, it, it, I'm much, much more, like, not scared. I'm not scared at all now, but, well, maybe it's hard to do it. <laughs> yeah, so, I think it's really helped. <laughs> it's another day in the busy life of Homewood School. Like I look normal. <laughs> Meet Truancy Toad, Punctuality Pup and Attendance Ted. Although this may look like odd behaviour, sometimes it takes a slightly different slant on things to get messages across to young people. My associate colleagues are as important to me as my teaching colleagues because without them, without their expertise, without their, in many cases, their worldly wisdom, we would not be able to do the job that we do with our young people. Well, normally, um, this is Laura, she's our Education Welfare Officer. Um, Laura will use these to go to primary schools, is that right? I'm going to schools in um, secondary, but for some reason you want it in the secondary, so... Because obviously these will appeal to primary schools more than secondary schools. Um, and it's just to encourage attendance, because we work very Thanks, hard on attendance nice. and truancy Hello. in this school. Um, so this is just a bit of fun. These are Homewood School Family Support Coordinators and Attendance Officers. It's mostly their work that puts the school in contact with outside agencies. And that's what we'll be looking at in this part of the programme. Um, good morning. Uh, thank you for giving up your time today. Since it's such a large school, Homewood is the only secondary in the local Ashford Rural Cluster. Today they're all meeting to make new contacts and share new ideas for effective multi-agency work. While we're here, the aim really is to look at ways of delivering integrated services for children and families. So then put that one lower, that one's higher. So that goes there then? Yeah, and then that one as well then. For School Family Support Coordinator, Joe Keeler, it's a good chance to talk through some scenarios with other local agencies. We've got these cards and basically um, we're looking at how much agency involvement we would need, um, whether it's a, a thing a school should be dealing with or whether they should be contacting agencies for support. So that's engaging law abiding. We're just trying to see how strongly the school and the agencies would link up. It would bring other agencies and maybe the police or the, I mean, the yeah. new youth team as well. Youth team, yeah. That one, do you think? Is that as high as that one? Or does it go a bit lower? The ambition for this day was to bring together as many of the associate colleagues as possible, even if it was just saying, ah, you're the person at the end of the telephone I um, speak to. Um, I'm a specialist teacher in the two Ashford... Or can we share some information about that student? or what do you do in your role in the school? And we're looking to see where the pools of expertise are so that we can look to further training opportunities so that somebody from my school or someone from the local the primaries can come in and say, well, this is how we deal with X, whatever X might be. It's all about good collaboration, whether that's between schools and external agencies or different associate staff members within the school. 
I work as a school family support coordinator and so I am there available during the school, during the day at school, whereas obviously the teachers aren't always available. So a student can come in and see me at any time with any problem. I can go out to the house to see parents, so whatever it is to do with the child, we can somehow work around the problem. Back at Homewood, the beginning of a new day is always a busy time. At the daily staff meeting, Hillary is trying to bridge the gap between agencies and teachers while making plans for a difficult student. She's with mini school leader Hannah Jones and a long-suffering form tutor. I think he needs a, a heavy-handed approach been almost. To learn more. But he doesn't accept that anymore, does he? No, he won't do it. He won't do the therapy that was arranged. Mm -hmm. He did about two or three. Right, so what other outside agencies have we got? Julie. Julie Elston. There's nothing else that... I he's, he's, been to, I don't, he's been to connections in the past. I mean, we can't involve too many agencies all at the same time. I, That's the trouble. One of our students is really being a problem at the moment, and it is trying to find the best way forward. That really is. We have got a lot of problems. We've had problems over the past year or so. We've tried different tactics. We've got outside agencies involved. The problem is, is that, that exactly, you're wasting that 20 minutes. That you know, so you waste. Half. Yeah, you waste. Sometimes Hillary's job allows her to see the wider picture, and she finds herself standing up for the problem kids. I would like him to have the chance to go to this English and All see right. how we get on. All right, it's okay. Morning. All right, but well, the first time he steps out of line. Yeah, Mike Rowland has got his report. I think. I mean. Principal teacher, mini school leader. Very... If he doesn't do as we ask, he needs to be disciplined. So, bad cop, good cop. Good cop. <laughs> okay. The other side of multi agency work involves conveying strong messages that resonate with young people. And at Homewood, they're always in favour of embracing new approaches, especially when the police are involved. When do you finish school? Is it in a few days' time? Okay. You've got a five-week holiday and we want you to be safe outside this year. The only person who controls what you do is you, that's right. I love it because when, when, they, when they kind of announce that the police are coming into school, the children expect an officer to come and stand on stage and, and maybe even lecture them for 40 minutes. OK, boys, you're out and about in the summer and something's going on and you're not sure what to do. What are you going to say to yourself? Okay, girls, you can do louder than that. One, two, three. Yeah. Fantastic. We've got loads of lights, obviously, you've seen you know, the lights and the, and the video screens. We've got dancers. We, we normally bring in a singer. Yeah. Give yourself a big cheers. Yeah. We're just trying to engage them in their culture. So it's trying to be relevant to what they know, but to get the serious message across within that using game shows and lots of messages and, and that kind of stuff. If I was to go up on stage and talk to them about binge drinking, I would never get it across in the way that they did today. Teachers cannot do that, so um, the more they can do, the better. They're fantastic. Once and for all, let's just see if you've got the message. One, two, three. What would you say to yourself this summer? Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you again soon. Bye!